Our reading this morning is from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 14. And at this time, I just ask that Father God sends his spirit to be with us this morning to cover this service, to cover Pastor Julie's words, and that we hear it to his edification. Thank you, Jesus. Now when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I've been moving about in a tent in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people? Israel saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all of your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. This is the word of the Holy God. Thanks. In the epistle um, coming from Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. Here's what the words of Paul proclaim. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is what? Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is. Because the day, capital D, will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a word. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved. Even though only as one escaping through the flames, don't you know that you yourself, or you yourselves, are God's temple. And that God's spirit dwells in your midst. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred. And you together are that, what? Temple. temple. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you please pray with me? Gracious Holy God, we thank you for your word this morning. And Lord, sometimes our minds start racing and thinking other things. But God, this morning I ask that you direct us to you, the Holy One, the God with all power and with all might, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, 
Open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to you. And let us be transformed by your amazing grace as we hear your word. So Lord, open us up to your spirit once again and move in us to be your church in a powerful way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now, this morning the title of the message is, Does God Prefer a Mobile Home? Now, sometimes mobile homes are pretty much stationary. But sometimes people like to camp. How many here like to camp? Mobile homes can be taken anywhere. And uh, you can go to up to the state park if you want to. You can go down to the beach if you want to. Have some wonderful time away from home in a mobile home. So I'm not talking about one that we would live in per se, one that's stationary. I'm talking today about one that moves around. So God, does God prefer a mobile home? So I'm going to ask you that question this morning. Well, in Exodus 25, God gives Moses the instructions to build the Ark of the Covenant, what to place in it, and how to build the tent that would hold the Ark of the Covenant. Now when I say ark, I'm talking about a wooden box. And as you know that, um, God instructed Moses to put in there what was the very presence of God. God's word in the Ten Commandments, plus some other things. And what they did was they carried that wherever they went. It initially was in a tent, but then they carried it wherever they went. Moving forward, here's what God says. Then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. All of its furnishings in the tabernacle, exactly like the pattern I show you. So here, David had just finished building this wonderful place where he lived. But David was feeling guilty. For David, he was living in a home made of cedar. So that meant his home was quite costly and expensive. It would be like living in a cedar chest. <laughs> They say that it was constructed from that cedar. So could you imagine living in a cedar chest and having that aroma coming at you all the time? Your house would smell good. You wouldn't have to worry about any incense burners or anything like that. But within that, not only did the house of cedar exist with a pleasant smell, but it also repelled varmin and insects. Top it off, cedar was actually used frequently, even though it was very expensive in biblical days, it was used frequently because it was easy to shape and easy to work with. In fact, when I was over in Israel, I saw a boat like they talk about in the New Testament. They call it the Jesus boat. Now they couldn't proclaim for sure if this was the boat of Jesus that they brought up from the sea. However, that boat was made out of cedar, Caesar because, cedar because it was able to shape and to be formed well, therefore keeping out water. So cedar is very good quality wood, as you well know. So David is in his wonderful, smelling, beautiful home, and he gets this urge upon him. He says... The house that I'm living in is pretty nice. And David shares with Nathan, I think we should build God a big building. I think we should build God a nice place where his body can dwell as well. While Nathan was often serving right beside David, and at first, Nathan was right on board with David's suggestion. 
In fact, David had a lot of wisdom, so of course he would be on board with that. But before David could start driving that first nail and the board to prepare this place for God, guess what happened? God delivered a message to Nathan that he didn't want a house built out of all of this stuff. And normally God would speak directly to the person, but for some reason he goes through Nathan the prophet here to convey the message to David. Perhaps so that he could hear it better. So as Nathan receives this bold revelation from God that God is not in favor of building the large building. No cedar, no stone, and not even a place in David's eyes for the presence of God to dwell. God didn't want a formal house to be built at the time. But as God talks to Nathan, Here's what God says. I'm going to build another kind of house for David. I'm going to build a house for him. And when your days are fulfilled, God reminds Nathan of how David was a person who was once a shepherd, who was not kept in a box, but who was able to roam the fields freely, caring for God's sheep. However, God made David king over Israel. Just like with Abraham in the beginning of the Bible with that covenant, God said to Abraham, or Abram at the time, he says, I will make you the father of many nations. I will make you so many descendants that you can't even count them, similar to the grains of the sand. You cannot count grains of sand. Therefore, I will bless you with all of these descendants. Here's what God said to Nathan, to David. And you will lie down with your ancestors. And I will raise you up a seed after you that will come forth from your body. And I will establish a kingdom where a king shall reign from the throne of David. He shall build a house for my name. Not the kind of house that David was thinking, but he shall build a house for God's name. And he, God says, I will dwell and establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he will be a son to me. Now, in... Jewish history, as with here in the city of David, it's customary for the next oldest son to be born, to build, and to be the king. However, God's saying to David, this king will be born after your time. So that automatically raises a red flag. How's God going to be Boring, warning a child, a king, after David is gone. Well, God will build a house for David, all right. Not because David did everything the right way, but because it is God's will to be revealed and unfolded to humankind. God had designed and built the house that was to be built upon the throne of Jesus Christ. If you look again in biblical history, the Gospels primarily connect our salvation, our hope, our home, in the hope, the dynasty, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And often you'll hear that house of David Lively proclaimed on Palm Sunday as a king himself enters the city of Jerusalem riding that humbly upon a donkey, not like usual kings, but he rode humbly upon a donkey through the city. My friends, this story, this reality, this hope that we have is built up on no other ground but the fulfillment of Jesus Christ. 
as the promised one to the people of Israel, the promised one to us, the descendant of David, Jesus Christ, was the King of Kings, the Lords of Lords, the eternal King of the eternal kingdom of God. My friends, God does desire a mobile home. Let me clarify why. In the New Testament, the scripture talks, Paul talks about us being the royal priesthood. God has returned in his dynasty in a different way through Jesus Christ. And as you know, Jesus came, Jesus died on the cross, and Jesus was resurrected. He came to show us how to live. And as he was resurrected, he ascended into the kingdom of heaven and then came down among us. God sent the Holy Spirit, which is everywhere. We are the temple. You are the temple of God. You are God's mobile home. You take God with you everywhere you go. My friends, in the New Testament, as Jesus is proclaimed as a new covenant, the covenant of grace, the covenant of forgiveness, not by following the law. I mean, we still need to keep that law and follow it, but there is forgiveness, there is new life that is given to us through Jesus Christ. And Jesus came not as a big building, not as a big statement, but Jesus came to declare that God's kingdom is all about the heart. The heartbeat of God living in you and me. God sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts. My friends, your heart is a mobile home. Your heart is to contain the very presence of God and indicate to the world that God is on the move. Because God is working for you. And your heart is to continue to tell God's story. Even as we look at our ancestors through John Wesley, John Wesley did not stay in the building. In fact, the movement of Methodism is created as a holiness movement. John Wesley never declared for it to be a church building or a church. He wanted it to be about the heart, a holiness movement. And you remember the sermons the hours day that day and then, he said about his heart being strange and warm. Remember that story? Remember Cleopas as he was taking that road to Emmaus? He sat down at the table with Jesus. His heart too was strange and warm. And how does our hearts become strange and warm? Our heart is strange and warm because we have an encounter with Jesus. A divine appointment, you might say.
Yeah. 